The engine crew had arrived prior to us and they were doing CPR and had already started um, supportive care and resuscitation efforts. And we very quickly transitioned to the medic uh, vehicle and left to go right to Children's Hospital. We did most of the work en route, just because you know, time is a, is a huge factor. But in, in the initial assessment, when someone is not breathing and has no heart rate, um, their chances of resuscitation are, is very low and they often never make it out of the hospital. You can get them back for a little bit, but then, you know, they just succumb to, you know, their injuries. When he was teetering on the edge of surviving or not, those, those first several weeks, um, there was no question in my mind I wanted him to survive. And I even, you know, I just prayed and said, you know, I don't care if I have to take care of him for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what I want to do. I'd rather have, he st have him stay here. Wouldn't be able to move him around without him, although I can still pick him up and carry him, but it, I really am not supposed to because he weighs almost as much as me at this point. And um, but we're going to be installing a new system and it's a lot uh, easier. It can actually move him around from room to room. Okay, guy. Upsy daisy and you love this part. Because it helps, it makes you stretch. <laughs> what? What are you doing? <laughs> you like, this feels good, doesn't it? It's one of the few times you can just sort of be flying around. It's just like a little ride. <laughs> I see you. I see you. We kind of had, um, uh, we, we knew that he'd survived and we knew we'd actually gotten pulses back in the vehicle on the way to the hospital. So um, we just weren't sure of the, the long-term outcome. And uh, probably about a year after the, uh, the event, uh, we were called out to the house to, to see Matthew. So most of us who were on the initial run got to come out and see him. And that was extremely rewarding for all of us. Um, again, the, out, the outcomes are, for these things are usually much worse. Mm -hmm. And to see the family's happiness with Matthew was, was really amazing. You know, my dad taught me that, you know, when faced with something bad, you just pull up your bootstraps and you keep moving forward and you, you just forge forward, mm -hmm. try to make the best of it. And my mom always encouraged me to always look at the best of people. If you see something bad, there's something good. So she always taught me to look at the good and to make things as, as good as you can for him. And that's why I always said after his accident, I made, I worked to make a new normal. You know, there wasn't gonna be a normal normal anymore. It would be a new normal that would be unique to our family. If someone would have told me a week before his accident that what was going to happen and what the next 20 years of my life would be like, I would have said, oh, not me, I can't handle that. That's, I'm not that kind of person. And he's taught me to be a very strong advocate, um, a lot of confidence, not only in his care, but also just as, just as a human being. And like I say to so many, you know, I say to people, you know, even though he can't speak words, each person he comes into contact with, he touches them in a way and he speaks volumes to them. So.